my dive just 10 seconds before I start in 2015 on the 16th of October, so almost three years ago. But I can imagine that, and maybe you were thinking I was jumping off a cliff or either jump out of a, an airplane, because I know, I realize a lot of people don't really know what, what's free diving about. So let me tell you something. So the first part is we always uh, dive on one breath. So either we re relax as much as possible, just hold our breath, or we swim as far as possible, or we go as deep as possible on one breath. And I chose to do a world's record in the variable weight discipline. And that means that I use a sled, a weight, to go down as deep as possible and then swim up or using the rope to go up. And um, well, the, just for you to know, the record at that moment was 127 meters deep. So just to give you an image, I chose a building like this. It's like 43 storages high. And uh, this equals the, the height in which I had to dive as deep as possible. So I'm really a bit afraid of heights. So if I would imagine me seeing on the top of the building looking down, really the sweat goes on, on my back. But uh, fortunately for me, I don't have that with depth. So, um, but I'm not talking here about m only my dive, but more of how did I find the courage to go deeper than anyone before and how that can help you um, for your goals. So let me introduce myself. Who am I at that moment? So I, I, was a, um, I, I am still, but I was a woman of 39 years old then. And uh, I was thinking I would like to do something special before I got 40. And uh, I have quite a big mouth. Um, at that moment, I had 29 national records. And I always said, I'm really good at freediver. I'm so, so good, I can do a world record. Until my friend said to me, okay, do it then. <laughs> Show us you can do it. So there I was with my big mouth. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, I had some reasons not to do it, but it started with a dream. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a world record in freediving in one of the deepest disciplines possible. So it started with a dream. So what are the reasons not to do it? Well, for example, I chose a gilder. That's, a, that's the Dutch coin, it's quite old. So that symbolizes me from the Netherlands, the most shallow country in the world, with a sea, the North Sea, that at its deepest point is 40 meters. So that wouldn't be enough to do a world record. So there was a challenge there. Um, but also because it's quite old, and if you think about uh, really athletic people, uh, you wouldn't think about me, because then I was like, like I am now, a little bit chubby, <laughs> a, a little bit too much kilos, 39 years old, so wouldn't think of the dream person to go for a world record. Um, I had two children, still have, uh, <laughs> fortunately, um, but that that for me uh, was a thing that's just a fact. I'm not gonna go for half a year going to Egypt or another far country to go and train for something like a world record. Um, no, I want to be there for my kids. So I decided I'm, I'm just going for a couple of periods in time. So that made it uh, the, the biggest challenge, the time. I, I chose to have about three blocks of three to four weeks uh, to go uh, uh, abroad, to train in Egypt, to dive as deep as possible. So that was quite a, a big challenge. Um, and I'm a freediving instructor uh, for, for work, and an, a world record to do it like this is quite some money, so I had to work as well. So th those were the reasons not to do it, but I didn't see it as not to do it, but just as the boundaries where I would go for the goal to. So there I was for the periods of training in Egypt. And it would be really, really 
uh, great if everything suited out well because the time was so narrow. But as always, there were some problems and especially in the last block of training, we had four weeks and the last week was made a reservation for the attempt. So um, just three days before I went to the plane, um, the free diving center that would organize the whole uh, event called me and said, yes, Nanya, maybe you can do it in Greece instead of Egypt. I said, how so? Um, yes, we don't have the permit for the free diving center. Uh, the Egyptian government says no for now. This I was in shock at that moment because I said, yes, how then? Yeah, you have to look for another free diving center, other people. I said, that's no option for to me. So, but can I train? Go, can I go into the water and train for a world record? Yes, you can train. I said, if I can train, I can do a world record. So I went on the plane. But that gave me so much stress. And if you have stress, well, you know how it's that with the body. So I caught a cold. And everyone who knows something about scuba diving or otherwise diving, mucus is not the thing you want. So that's quite a problem. Um, yeah, it made me get more stress, but the diving went okay with the mucus. And then, especially the last 10 minutes, those were quite different, because the last 10 minutes before I went down to dive, the technical diver was already on the way, so I had to start, but then clouds appeared on the sky. And what does that mean? Well, it's not going to rain in Egypt, but I knew if there were clouds on the sky, it would be more dark at 130 meters. And every th time I was thinking with some fear in my body about uh, the diving, it was always darker. So to me, the visual part of the dive to have the sun was really always helpful. Never, ever in training I had clouds. So the last 10 mi minutes, I was only thinking, oh God, it's dark, but it's okay. It's a little bit more dark, it's okay. That's it. So now I'm gonna show you my dive and the movie is in real time. So if you watch it from inhale when I start to the exhale when I come up, um, that's, that's the, the time I did it. So maybe you can just follow me <laughs> and hold your breath just du du during the time I do it. <laughs> it's just three minutes, so no problem, eh? <laughs> so here you can see me. And I'm really concentrating now. 20 seconds. And you see um, the big square Ten thing on my seconds. feet. That's where I put in my monofin. And I use the monofin to swim Five. up. Official top. Okay, so you wanna do it. Breathe now, really good. And then I inhale. And even a little bit more than 100%, so that's why I... Like you see me uh, with the mouth. And now you hear the wheezing sound of the rope in the sled, and it's the only thing I hear when I go deeper. So and it's not really sexy because you see my m cheeks like like this, but that's because I have to equalize the pressure in my ears. So until 40 35 meters. meters, I put in as much in air as possible in my mouth to equalize my ears. So while 60 I meters. go diving during the descent, my lungs will shrink until the size of oranges. 80 meters. You see the changing of the color. 
100 meters. One minute dive time. Can you see it? I can see quite a lot at 130 One meters. One ten. Touchdown. And down. I'm there. I had the whole time the doubt because my charge to fill my mouth to 35 meters was not as much as normal because of the stress. But I did it. I was there. So now the only thing I'm thinking is, okay, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make First it. First safety make down. It, I'm gonna make it. My safeties are free divers as well, because it's really important then that they go uh, up and down with the same speed as me. So this one is, um, is my deepest safety and he uses um, a device to bring him down easily. Because a lot of you pr probably think it's really dangerous down there, but it's not down there that's uh, that's dangerous. It's the coming up, because then the air in my lungs expand, and the pressure of the oxygen will go down. Yeah. So from 40 meters, I already have my safety 40. there. There you see me coming up. 30 meters. Because of the stress, I'm a little bit drunk of the death. So you see me at the rope, grabbing a little 20 bit. 20 meters. Relaxed. And then I have to go up, 15. face the judges. And those are the people in yellow. Take everything from my Ten. face, an okay signal, and say, I'm okay within 15 seconds. 15.1 is red card. A little bit nervous, so I turned with my back. Now I have to wait for the card. Because if I would faint at this moment, it's still not okay. Yes, it's a competition. <laughs> I'm already happy I'm up. <laughs> yeah! Thank you. So it started with the why. I saw all your faces going, why? <laughs> yeah, but for me, the why is quite important because I really like to coach and train people and make them aware of their ability to get to their goals, to, to show them a goal that's really hard to get there and show them the mental aspect is really important because if I could do it with all the nuts I just told you, Everyone could do it, well, almost. Um, so I could help people with my stories and make a contribution there so that they can get to their goals. So, but I can hear you say, how then? Well, there were a lot of reasons not to do it. So did I have fears? Yes. I experienced a lot of fears, especially one of the dives just before the world records attempt where my safety lanyard got lost in the break and I couldn't swim up, but I had to use another device to come up. I felt fear then. Did I have doubts? Yes, I had a lot of doubts. It made me wake up night after night in the year I was training for this record. But I embraced my doubts. I faced my fears. So I could tell my story to you. So um, how did I do it? It's more that I saw the everything that made me not do it as just as the boundaries, how to get there. I was not going to try to go for the goal. No, I was going to do the record. Yeah, I really don't like the record attempt, the attempt part of the dive. So I only believed in the positive thoughts there and 
just trained and trained them over again so I really felt to believe. So I became my belief, it is mental. So then I wonder if you have a really big dream and a bit of mental, that's okay, a little bit crazy for you. Then I wonder who are you in your belief and will you be courageous enough to get there? Thank you.